So the 6 kg cylindrical collar is released from rest in the position shown and drops onto the spring. Calculate the velocity of the cylinder when the spring has been compressed 50 mm. So for this question, we're going to be using the work energy equation, which is that the change in energy between two different points has to be equal to the work applied minus the work lost. So our change in energy is going to be from the initial position, um, which is when the block is here, to the final position, which is when the, the spring has been compressed 50 millimetres, so it's down here somewhere. So thinking about the right-hand side of the equation, the work applied, um, we're only going to have this term if we have an extra force acting on our system, um, which is going to add some additional energy into it. Now, in this case, we don't have that, ca that case, so that means that the work applied is going to be zero. Similarly, work loss is only going to occur if we have something that can take energy from our system, um, such as friction or air resistance. So if we assume that those are both negligible, that means that work lost is also going to be zero. So all that we're left with is that the change in energy, so the final minus the initial, is equal to zero, which is conservation of energy. And we can rearrange this to be whatever we have at the beginning, we have to have at the end. So I'm going to go through and calculate um, how much energy I have at the beginning and the end separately, and then we'll go back and put it into this equation. So at the beginning, we may have kinetic energy, potential energy due to gravity, and potential energy due to the springs. So the initial position when it is when it's up the top here, and we're told that it is released from rest. So that means that it's got no initial velocity, and it's going to have no kinetic energy either. So we can get rid of this term. So potential energy due to gravity it needs to be measured from a reference point, and I'm going to select in line with this spring as being my reference point. So I'll call it zero height, or my height datum. So if I measure the height of the block from this point, it's going to be 500 millimeters above that. So we are definitely going to have kinetic energy, sorry, potential energy due to gravity, which is equal to mgh. So the last term is the potential energy due to the spring. And when our block is up the top here, our spring is at its uncompressed or its resting length. So that means it's not going to be storing any energy. And we can also get rid of that final term. So we've simplified it down to just needing to calculate this. So we're told that the mass of the block is 6 kilograms, gravity is 9.8, and the height measured from our reference point, um, I'm just going to use this 500 millimetres or 0 0.5 in metres. And that comes out to be 29.4 joules. So now we just need to do the same thing for the final position. So this time the final position is when the block has dropped down and it's going to be at um, 50 millimetres compression. All right. So this distance in here, x, is going to be 50 millimetres. Okay. So kinetic energy at this point, we're probably going to have some um, because that's what we're trying to find. So we can write this as a half mv squared. Potential energy due to gravity, again, this is relative to your reference point. So we measure to the bottom of our block here. If the bottom of our block is then um, obviously moved to be below our zero height line, we are going to have some potential energy due to gravity, which we'll call mgh. Alright, and for potential energy to the spring, it will exist. It's going to be a half kx squared, of course, because we're compressing the spring in the final position to 50 millimetres. So now it's just a matter of substituting in the values. So starting off with the kinetic energy, it's going to be a half times the mass of the block, which is 6 kilograms, multiplied by its velocity, which is v squared. For potential energy due to gravity, again it's the mass of 6 times gravity which is 9.8 
and we need to measure the height from our zero height line that we used. So using this reference, um, we measured from to the bottom of the block before. So after this block falls down and it compresses by a distance of 50 millimeters, um, it's going to have a um, height. It's going to be negative because it's below the zero height line and it's going to be negative 0.05. All right, because we've compressed it by that 50 mil, which is 0.05 in meters. So the last thing is just the potential energy due to the spring which is a half multiplied by K for the spring, which is 12 um, kilonewtons per meter, or in meters, it's 12,000. All right, and the other thing we need is the compression of the spring, which is X, and looking at our diagram, we've said it's gonna be 50 millimeters, um, as was described in the question, because that's the point we're interested in. So this becomes 0.05 squared. So if we simplify this down, this part becomes 3b squared, and all of these numbers on the right um, can be simplified to about 12.06. So that becomes our final velocity um, equation, sorry, final energy equation. So now that we've worked out what the initial and the final actually are, we can go back and put them into our um, equation that we started with. So what we know is that 29.4 joules has to equal 3v squared plus 12.06 and now it's just a matter of solving for v. So 29.4 minus 12.06 divided by 3 and square rooted is going to give you the velocity and if you solve for this number, it comes out to be 2.4 meters per second. So that's the final answer um, for the question. So that's all there is. Um, see you in the next one.